All right, so I think uh, the session has started to be recorded. All right, guys, so welcome to uh, EKT221. So we're going to have an uh, online lecture uh, throughout this semester. So uh, basically, if you guys look in the schedule, we have uh, two lecture sessions. Uh, the first one is more on asynchronous, where you guys are going to do, uh, I mean, go through the lecture on your own time. And then the second one is synchronous. So synchronous is uh, like this. So we're going to have, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, live session where we can uh, have a discussion or if you guys want to ask uh, any questions, you guys are allowed to do that. All right, so um, uh, okay, I'll go through about, um, I mean, details of the class after this, right? So this uh, course uh, will have four credit hours, which mean uh, when you're going to have labs, right? Okay, so for this semester, there are going to be two lecturers uh, that uh, managing this uh, course, which is me, um, Muslim Mustafa, and also Madam Nurbaya. Okay. Oh, sorry, I did. <laughs> I need to change the email. Okay. Actually, before this, it was uh, Mr. Sunny, but then they changed it. I mean, like Mr. Sunny need to teach at Sungai uh, Chucho, then uh, they, they changed it to Madam Norbaya. Okay. All right. So basically, this is the textbook that uh, we're going to use throughout the semester. Uh, we have the soft copy of it, so I think uh, you don't need to buy it because we're going to use only, uh, I think, one chapter. We really use one chapter out of this textbook. Okay, so uh, basically these are the things that we're going to discuss uh, in throughout the courses. So uh, chapter one, we'll talk about register and register transfer. So I will update, uh, I mean, most of the slides because if you guys are referring to the previous semester slide, there are gonna be a lot of changes. Uh, because I need to update it so that uh, it suit, uh, you know, the, the current situation and uh, that you guys may based on the knowledge that you guys need to know nowadays, right? Okay, so basically we're going to uh, cover all these things, register, counters. I mean, that's why the uh, basic knowledge of uh, digit, digital electronic one is very important. So it's good if you guys uh, can go through uh, or can uh, try to revise, you know, the content of uh, digit one because we are not going to do that in details. So you guys have to do that on your own time or on your own effort. OK, then uh, we're going to have uh, sequencing and control, state machine, data pass, algorithm, OK, memory basics. We're going to we're going to talk about, you know, what are the memory and why we are using, we are using it, it and how we we're going to use it. All right, then we going to talk about computer design basics. OK, uh, basically this is uh, regarding the uh, hardware, Altera. We're going to use uh, Altera the E2 board. Uh, and also the software that we're going to use is uh, Quartus. I think you guys already uh, started to using it. But for the hardware part, uh, I think uh, because we are doing the lab online, maybe we are not going to use it. So maybe we're just going to use uh, only simulation, which which means that we just use uh, only the software tools, which is the quarters tool. I mean, because it is okay, it is just one step before you reach the hardware. All right, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to teach you guys how, how to do it later, all right, in the lab session. Okay, so basically this is an uh, example of the uh, FPGA development uh, kit or development board that we're going to use. This is uh, the ETO board. So if you guys are doing this lab in the our uh, lab class at Power, so you guys are gonna have this kind of board, right? But unfortunately, because of the current situation, you are not able, or because of you know, some of you are not able to come back, so that's why we have decided that just make the whole thing online, all right? Okay, so basically this is how the board uh, looks like. So you guys can see here, this part is the FPGA. What is FPGA? FPGA is field gate programmable array. I'm going to talk about it later, all right? So this is something that we can program. 
on this chip. So the other part of the board is only the supporting, you know, circuitry mean to to enable this FPGA work as it should be. And then you can also see on the board there are some other peripherals such as, you know, uh, we can see this LCD uh, display here. We can see seven segment display here. And you guys can also see LEDs. There are a few LEDs here. And then you can see the, the switches. And then here are the push buttons. And you can also see some, uh, you know, uh, pins for input and outputs. And there are a lot of other uh, peripherals that we can connect to the outside uh, peripherals. Okay, so uh, these are all the details. You now, basically, I mean, this board can 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 do a lot of things, right? But uh, for this class, we only learn the basic things. I mean, to learn how we can use this digital electronics knowledge, you know, to construct our own uh, digital circuit. Okay, uh, basically, there, there are three objectives. So there are three objectives that you guys need to uh, achieve throughout this course. So the first one is uh, ability to apply knowledge of a digital system in registered transfer language form. All right, so I have decided for this CO1, we're going to use, okay, I'm sorry because of the terrible handwriting because I'm using mouse. All right, so we're going to use Verilog. You guys can go and Google what is Verilog. So Verilog is a type of HDL. All right, what is HDL? Hardware Description Language. So there are two famous languages that they use for HDL. The first one is Verilog. The second one is VHDL. But for this course, I'm going to teach you Verilog. All right, so I'm going to talk about uh, with you guys later what is Verilog, all right? Okay, so this is the first course outcome. So by hook, by hook, uh, in the end of these courses, by we, after week 14, you guys need to be able to achieve this objective, right? So if you guys fail to achieve this objective, that means, you know what I mean, like there's something wrong with me or with the courses or something wrong with you guys too, right? All right, so that's why we have to work together so that we can achieve uh, this uh, CO1. All right, so for CO2, so uh, it is the ability to analyze sequential systems of on finite state machine, FSM, and also algorithmic state machine. So basically, these are the method or technique that they use to design a digital circuit. Uh, this one is okay, I'm going to cover in the lecture. So uh, when you guys, uh, I mean, if you guys are working in the industry, right, let's say you guys need to design your own digital circuit, then these are the, the knowledge that you guys can uh, you know, need to use, you know, to design the digital circuit. So you can use finite state machine or algorithmic uh, state machine. Okay, so this is CO2. So by the end of this course, you have to be able to do this, right, by using either FSM or ASM. So guys, you know, hey, bear in mind that, you know, you guys gonna be tested based on all this course outcome all right because we are designing the course for you guys to achieve all these three course outcome so all of the exams the tests the assignment all of, of the things will be covering the covering these three course objectives all right i hope you guys can uh, try to get the idea Right. By the way, guys, I'm recording the lecture, so I'm going to upload the lecture after we uh, we finish the lecture so that you guys can go and uh, view the lecture anytime that you guys want right? to do the revision. If you guys have any question, you can either stop me, I mean asking through the mic, or you can you can uh, place a uh, question uh, in the chat session. Okay, the CO3 is ability to use a digital system with control unit using modern engineering IT tool, all right. So this modern engineering tool, we are gonna use Quartus, all right. So that one is fine because you're gonna use uh, Quartus uh, in your lab. So Quartus two in your lab session, you should cover this thing. But ability to design a digital system with control unit. So this part gonna be achieved throughout your mini project. So you guys are gonna be given mini project and you have to work on it 
so that you guys can achieve this objective number three. All right, so if you guys have question, please let me know, okay? All right, so this is, I think, the most important part that, uh, that you guys need to know. So this is how we're going to assess uh, this course uh, for this semester. So as the COVID situation is, is I mean, making us, you know, unknown, uh, so we don't know when this thing going to settle down or we don't know, you know, which part of the measure that going to have PKP, I mean, now or soon. All right, so that's why, I mean, we change the assessment into 100, I mean, no final exam. All right, so we're going to have, I mean, everything will be done online. I mean, we're going to let you know, I mean, how all this assessment will be done. So the assignment will uh, be 20% of your final marks. All right, so it's quite high. And then the quiz is going to be 10% of your final mark and then lab 10%. So that's why lab is important. So you guys have to come and you know do the lab on your own so that you guys understand it. And then mini project, I mean also carry big portion of the final mark. You can see it's a 20% and also examination. So examination will be divided into two tests. So the total mark will be 40%. So each test is gonna be 20%. All right. Okay. Is there any question? Okay, you guys have the the chat session, right? So you guys can can uh, can uh, you know ask any question if you guys have one. By the way, I mean, how's my my the microphone? Is it okay? Can you guys hear my voice clearly, or is it too much noise? Clear, 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 clear. Right, yeah. yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go ahead. I know the online class is boring, right? But what to do so that's why I'm, I'm recording it so that you guys can refer to it but i don't know what you guys are really doing right now either you guys are hearing to me or you guys are watching youtube or whatever okay all right so guys so uh, basically this is these are the things that you guys have learned which will help you guys to understand this course better so digit uh, one so as you guys can see i mean these are the things that you guys already uh, covered so I understood that there's some of you guys from diploma, we, which uh, where you guys have uh, what do you call it? Uh, don't have to take digit one because you have already taken. It. So I hope that uh, you guys still remember whatever you guys have uh, learned before. So it is important for you guys to understand uh, digit two, right? So um, in digit one, you already cover, you know, the numbering system, the algebraic, you know, basic logic gates, Boolean algebra, and also the Kenoff map. So guys, I mean, these are the, the most fundamental things uh, in electronic, right? So basically, All right, so I'm, I'm using uh, red ink, right? I hope this doesn't offense you guys. So, uh, I mean, because I just want to make it uh, clear for you guys. Okay, basically uh, digital, right? So we are, we are talking about digital. So in, in throughout your, your degree here, right? SRK20 or whatever degree, base, electronic based degree, right? So you're gonna learn a few things that the first one is uh, digit one. Right, so digit one, and then after that, you're gonna learn digit two. Right, digit two, then after that, you're gonna learn POCA. So, what is POCA? Principle of computer architecture. So, all these three courses are related. Right, so these are electronic base. Oops, sorry, it's not electronic, sorry, electronic base. Electronic base, right? Right. So, why digital is important? Because as a, as an electronic engineer, so you guys are dealing with a lot of circuits, right? So, here in this class, we're gonna learn about this uh, digital circuit. 
Right, so what is digital circuit? So basically you have learned the basics of digital circuits in digit one, right? So you learn about the gates, you know, how the gates function, you know, you have learned about the uh, combinatorial, uh, combinational uh, circuit, you have learned about the sequential circuit, you guys have learned about the flip-flops, you know, shift register. Those are the fundamentals of the, or the basic circuit, you know, to form the computer, right? So basically here, we are talking about the computer, right? It's a computer. We're going to learn how the computer function. In the middle here, we're going to bridge, you know, how you can use your knowledge to construct a basic system, a basic uh, digital system, right? So this is the things that we're going to learn in uh, digit two, All right? So basically why is digital is important, All right? So because normally in class, I, I like to ask you guys question, right? But because this is online, and so uh, even I can point out your name here, but it's okay. All right, so we're going to assess you throughout quizzes or whatever either you guys understood my uh, lecture or not later, all right? Okay, so uh, as you guys can see here, so basically what is uh, the importance of digital system, right? Okay, so most of the signals in the real world are analog, right? So it is analog. So what is analog? Analog is a, is a continue, it is a, what do you call it? Uh, signal that, you know, uh, that is random and it is, it is a continuous, right? But then for the computer, they cannot process analog signal directly. Right? So what happened is that they have to change the analog signal, change it to digital signal. So that's why they call the digital signal is as a as a discrete discrete signal, right? So discrete signal. So it is it is not a continuous signal. So what happened is that I mean the analog signal you sample it. So you sample it. So you have here you sample it. What's the value here? You sample sample value here. Sample value here. Then you sample the value here. Then what you get is that it's a it's a digital signal. So at every point, you have a value. So then this digital signal, so let's say this signal, let's say I mean we have this signal, right? So uh, let's say here is one, 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 and then uh, zero, okay, so it's I have to do it backwards here. Okay. Mm. Let's erase it. Yes. Erase it. Okay. So pan back. Okay. All right. So uh, let's just we, we start from uh, zero 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 zero. And then we have zero zero one. So we have zero one zero. Zero one 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 zero zero one zero one right. So we change the analog signal right. So instead of let's say the analog signal is like this, so we change it to digital signal. So at point here, at t is equal to one second, the signal is zero zero one. So at t is equal to two second, so the signal is. 100 at t equal to 3 second the signal is 100 so it goes up until the end so this is how we change from analog to digital right so these are I mean about the signal okay then all right so after we we change the digital signal then we have to process it Right, to process so we have to process it inside a, a computer right so this is a computer 
I mean, guys, I mean, this is just want to give you a basic understanding, okay? So what we are going to learn in this subject and try to make sense, try to relate it with uh, each other so that you can make sense of it. You guys can know what you guys are going to learn, learn and what's the purpose of learning this subject. All right, so let's say this is the input, right? So this is your analog input, analog input. So inside here, there's a part where they do the A, 2D analog to digital conversion. So you convert analog from analog signal to digital. So when the input of the analog, okay, what is the examples of analog signal? So let's say uh, the mic, right? So I'm talking here right now. And then the mic is capturing my voice. So my voice is analog. But then how it can be transferred through the internet and you guys can hear it loud and clear. They change my voice into digital signal, they process it and they send it through the network and then you guys receive the packet and then they change it again into the analog signal, right? So there's an A to D and then also D to A, digital to analog converter. And then they, they, they change the signal. So now you have the data in digital. So let's say uh, we have a data that have a size of 8 bit. All right, so you can also call it S1, one byte, right? Because one byte is equal to eight bit. Remember, right? They say how you measure, I uh, mean, your, your main memory capacity is by using gig, right? So it's an eight uh, giga, gigabyte. So this is byte, right? So, but in bit, if you want to get it in bit, so you have to times it by, by eight. So what is mean by why they call it one byte? Because normally that is the size of the data. So this is one packet of data. Right? So the size of the data normally is 8 bit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right? So this is a one byte of data. So they change it into now we have a digital data. Okay, now by using this digital data, right? So this is digital data. So you guys going to process it. So how are you going to process it? By using your digital circuit. So that's why the, the importance of having a, a digital circuit, right? So how you construct this digital circuit? By using all the gates that you guys have laid. Right, so you guys using end gate, all gates and you guys using the shift register and whatsoever right to process the data and in in my lecture that i've already shared with you guys okay, uh, dinesh i think dinesh you have to uh mute your mic okay, let me mute him right okay guys please okay please uh, make sure your mic is mute Okay, so okay, where am I? Okay, I forgot. All right, so uh, so we have a digital, then we have to process the data, all right? And then so they, they are, you are using the digital circuit, you know, to process the data. So that's what we're gonna learn. How we gonna construct the digital circuit to process our data, and then we send it to the the CPU or our processor, all right? So the processor, so. You guys gonna learn about the processor in the uh, computer architecture in details, right? But we are not covering it in details. But I'm just want to give you, I mean, the the overall sense what we are gonna learn, right? So this CPU is the processor. So I, I'm giving you example, right? So in in our laptop, right? So we have all of our laptops. We have a processor. So we have Intel processor. We have uh, AMD processor. Right, and then all those processors, they have a different version. So they have i7, they have i5, they have i3. Right, so there, there are many versions. So I mean, what are the versions are really about? I mean, it is about what is inside here. Right, so I mean, it is how you form a, a CPU, I mean, the processor. The better the processor, you know, of course, the, the, the faster the process gonna be and the smoother the, the application will run in your, in your CPU. Example for if you guys want to use the PC for gaming, then you, you have to find, you know, the, the, the CPU that suit your need. So example, gaming means it's going to be processing a lot of graphics. 
right? So you need to have a processor that can work uh, greatly with the graphic cards, right? So graphic cards is another thing, right? So you're gonna have your, let's say this is a computer, then you're gonna have your your graphic card here, GPU, graphic processing unit, right? So this is GPU graphic processing unit, which will handle all the uh, the graphics uh, processing. So that's why if you guys are using a normal laptop without a graphic card, but you guys want to play, you know, high end games, it's going to be lag because your CPU are not able to process the whole information as fast as it should be. So that's why you have to have this GPU. So what is all this GPU? These are all electronics. These are all digital circuit inside it. So that process the data and then you guys can see the, the result in your on your monitor, on your screen. Right, the, the, the I mean how detailed the picture that the process all are being done by using this digital circuit. All right, I'm not sure you guys are following me or not. Is it okay, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, Good. we are following you. Okay, that's great, guys. Oh, somebody is requesting control. No, no, cannot let you control this class. All right. Okay, let's go back to our lecture here. All right, so, uh, okay, these are the things that you guys have learned. So these are all the basic knowledge that you need to know to design a, a circuit, right? So arithmetic, converter, comparator, encoder, decoder, right? Uh, Flip-flop, shift register, counter. We, we, we're gonna go into the details if we need to, right, throughout the lecture. Okay, let's see now, right? So these are the, the things that I've added in the lecture note. Okay, basically when we talk about digital, right? So we are talking about logic levels. So when we say logic one, right? So you remember you guys are doing the simulation, right? You guys give logic one to the gate, uh, let's say end gate, you give uh, input one, logic one, input two, logic zero, and then you get output logic zero, right? So actually what does this logic one mean? So actually this logic one means a representation of positive supply voltage, 3.3 volt. So that's why, you know, uh, previously during my undergrad time, right? So we are using the IC. So I mean, I try to draw the IC, right? So we guys try to make sense of it. I mean, it doesn't look terrible like this, but because of my drawing, right? This really looks terrible here. Okay, so I mean, just to give you example, right? So this is pin zero, this is pin one, pin two. So imagine this is an IC. I think you guys know what is IC, right? So this is the, the small chip here. So we have gates here. So let's say we have N gates. So this input zero is connected to pin one and sorry, this input zero is connected to input one to this end gate and pin one here is connected to input two. So this is input one, this is input two of the end gate. And then the output gonna be connected here. So let's say this is pin zero, pin one, uh, until pin six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is pin 10, right? So pin 10. So the pin 10 is the output. So when we conduct the experiment, right? So we have to give this the value to input so that we can see we are getting the correct output here. So we're going to connect this input into uh, what do you call it? Uh, power supply. Is it power supply? Voltage. Ah, uh, uh, it's a power supply. So it's a power supply. Looks like this. So you have connection here, right? So you set the voltage, right? So normally we're gonna set the voltage as five volt. So here we have positive, here we have negative, right? So what we're gonna do, I mean, of course there's a connection of positive and negative to activate the circuit. So we're going to connect this pin with high voltage five, and if we want to connect zero here, we have to connect this zero to ground. To ground, right? 
So actually, that is what it means by logic one and logic zero. All right, so basically it is an electrical circuit, electrical signal. All right, so when we say logic one is actually, example here is 3.3 .3 volt. But it's depend, you know, some circuit, they have a different, different settings. So, so you see here, digital chip can have multiple positive supply voltages. Some example, they have 3.3, some also using 1.8 volt. So any, any voltage that is higher than 1.8, is considered as logic. Any voltage is lower than this is considered as logic zero. All right, so basically, I mean, that, that is a logic levels. Okay, let's erase all in on the slide. Okay, now we talk about the gate. So the level indicates how many are inputs. Okay, this already explained in the lab, right? So end gate, all inputs are, okay, let's see. Okay, this one, we can skip it. All right, okay, how to describe or specify a digital circuit? All right, so th there are many ways, guys, to, you know, to describe or to specify digital circuits. The first one is by doing like what you guys did in the lab, right? By using the block diagram or schematics. So you guys can drag your logic here. So example here, three input and gate, four input and gate, four inputs and gates, right? And then connect it to three inputs uh, or gate. And then what's the output here? So this is one way you guys can uh, describe or specify your digital circuits. You can also describe or specify your digital circuits by using timing diagram. All right, so by using timing diagram, you can see here, right? So this is the clock, and then here is the, uh, where's the input, the S and Y. Okay, let's say this is the uh, input, right? So input S0, and what is the output here? Right, you guys can check from the timing diagram. When the clock is at 1, then S is equal to 1, then Y is equal to 1. So when clock is one and then S is one, then the value of one is equal to one, right? So I mean, this is just example. So it's timing diagram. You guys also have done the timing diagram part in the lab, so you guys can try to make sense of it, right? So by looking at the timing diagram, you can know I mean what are the response or what are the, I mean if the input is given like zero zero, what the output gonna be? You you can know it from looking at the timing diagram because later when you guys go into the industry you need to use all this knowledge right? you need to be able to read the timing diagram you need to be able to understand the schematic of the diagram right i mean you guys cannot run away from this if you guys want to join like electronic industry uh intel or uh or what they call it uh infineon you know, whatever, uh, Motorola, whatever uh, electronic industry that uh, available in Malaysia. So you guys need to know all these things. And also the truth table, right? So, I mean, you guys can also design your circuit by using truth table, right? So example here, if the input is 0, 0, 0 then what are the outputs going to be? So 0, 0, 0, 1, the output going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So, I mean, this is also can describe your digital circuits. And also, you can also describe your digital circuits by using your Boolean equation. So this one you guys have learned in your digit one. If you guys forgot about this, go and look back. What is Boolean equation? Okay, finally, guys, I want to show you guys. So you can also code your circuit, right? This is coding, but this coding is about Constructing a circuit. This is what we're going to learn uh, in le uh, lecture after this, right? So this is the RTL, uh, register transfer level, right? Language. So we're going to use uh, very long here. So here they describe the name of the module. So example here, MUX 32.3. And then here are the input and output pins that are available. And then they have input right 31 until 0 that means here they are specifying input i0 i1 and i2 the size is 32 bits 
So from here you can draw the circuit. I'm hoping you guys are following me, okay, so that I'm not enjoying myself by talking uh, alone to my laptop here. All right, so let's draw this. All right, so this is the input. Okay, I0, I1, and also I2. All right, so this is example. So, I mean, you are constructing a digital circuit here. So each of the inputs here, the size is 32 bits. 32 bits, which is also equal to 4 bytes, right? Because 1 byte is equal to 8 bits, so 4 bytes is equal to uh, 32 bits. And then we also have input, uh, select, so input, we have select here. And then we have output. So output out. So we have output. So the name of output here is out. And also we have register as okay. That this is the time. So the type of output here is a is a register time. All right. And the 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 size of the output is thirty two bits. Okay. What's happening inside here? It's being described here. So always listen to signal I0, I1, I2 or select. If there is any changes in the input, then do whatever inside here. I'm, I'm trying to give you make sense, you know, what are this all this coding are talking about. Case select, right? Okay, so case select. So select have two inputs here, right? Zero to one. So select is two bits. Here. So it's a two bit input. So if the select input is equal to zero, zero, then out I0. So if select is 0, 0, then you send the signal from I0, send it out here. If the input is 0, 1, then take the input and from, from I1, send it to out. If the input of the select is 1, 0, then take the input from I2, send it to the output. If nothing happened, none of the signals activate, then the default output is uh, X is what they call it, uh, whatever, right? So not whatever, I forgot the term, it's okay. So I mean, if, if nothing's on the input, then you just select, I mean, give whatever output, and I say this, right? Then, end case, that's it, that's it, right? So I mean, here is also talking about digital circuit. So these are the, this is the current technique that being used in the industry nowadays, right? So we're going to learn this throughout our uh, subject here, digital electronics too. Okay, these are all the basic digital building block. If you see, you know, let's say your phone, right? In your phone right now, I mean you have a processor, very high end processor inside your phone, uh, be it, you know, Snapdragon, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon or whatever processor or the, the Apple processor. I mean, all those processors, you know, how how advanced is the processor. If you zoom into the, 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 the chip, you're going to find all these basic building blocks. Right? You're going to see logic gates, multiplexer, arithmetic circuits. So all these things being used, you know, to develop or to construct those those complex circuits that finally are able to do great things. You know, you see nowadays, I mean, everything being turned into what I call it electronic, right? You have wearables, you have smart watch, you know, you have smart sunglasses. I mean, everything becomes smart. How they become smart? Because they are having a processor of their own to process all of the, of the data. How you process all of the data? By using the digital circuit, so you may, I mean, I, I, I try to open your guys' eyes, you know, so that you can see how important, you know, to to grab this knowledge, because these are the future, right? So if you guys look in the future, everything going to be turned into digital, so you cannot run away from digital electronics. All right, okay, so this is decoder flip flops, right? Okay, let's go. Okay, cause and effect.
Alright, so in a digital circuit, I mean you need to have a cause, then you're gonna see the effect. So you need to have something on the input, then you're gonna see the output. That is a digital uh, circuit. Alright, so input B going high. So example here, right? So this is your uh, timing diagram. So input B going high. So if input B high causes X to go low, right? So okay, I mean that okay, we're gonna talk about this, right? So you're gonna see a, a delay here. So it's not immediate as the one that you guys uh, seen in your in your lab, right? Okay, so as the input B going high, then X gonna go low. As input A go low, so go low, then you're gonna see X going high. So A is the cause, X you see the effect. So changes in A affect the output X. Changes in B affect the output of X. Okay, but if you guys see here, there's a delay here. You cannot see it in functional simulation because functional I mean they don't really take care of the delay, right? So in the real circuit, you're going to have a propagation delay. What is a propagation delay? So the time delay between a cause and its effect. So as soon as you give input here, so let's say you give input a, you give zero, you connect it to ground, right? So you connect it to ground. So it will not immediately force X to zero. A, A going low, causes S to go high. Oh, sorry, here. A low, A high, right? Okay, so look here. So when you give zero, it's not gonna force X immediately to go high so there's a delay here why there's a delay for the signal to travel inside here so it takes time you know it takes time to travel Boop. and you arrive here so the traveling time of the signal inside here is called as propagation delay right so from the giving the cost and looking at the effect that is the delay. So example here, so let's say the chip number here, 74AC00, which is, this is a chip for advanced CMOS2 input NAND gate. Okay, so basically, I mean, they, they specify the delay for you guys. So the delay, you know, is not going to be fixed because within the chip itself, I mean, it's being developed out of chemicals, you know, where you cannot really control 100% the accuracy so that's why they have a minimum maximum and also typical normally the standard one the delay will take around 4.5 nanoseconds so example right cmos uh, nand gate right so from the input to reach i mean to see the output here there's a delay. You have to wait for 4.5 nanosecond. I mean, it's, just, it's not really significant for human eyes, right? But it's significant for the computer. And then it can go as fast as 1.5 nanoseconds. And it can go up to maximum delay that can cost you guys 6.5 nanosecond. So it shouldn't be higher than this. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be lower than this. Why you need to know this? Because if you guys want to construct a complex circuit, you have to measure all those delays so that you're going to get correct output. So that's why simulation is very important. By using the, the simulation, then you guys can, can check whether your circuit is correct or not, or whether your circuit function as the one that you want it to, to function. All right? So any question, guys? You guys are perfect. It's my uh, sir, uh, yeah. uh, sir, I have a question. Typical, Go. it's an average or something uh, average and for minimum maximum. Okay, they're no, 
typical maksud it's not average because if average you know they 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 have they have a circuit and then they they going to test it you know oh, wait, wait wait let me check it uh typical okay i can say the typical is average for the whole product line so let's say let's say this chip being produced by company a right so being produced by company a company a so let's say they produce 1 million chip right so they, they produce uh 1 million chip so 1 million chip they produce they run a test so most of the chip they test the delay is 4.5 nanosecond. Yeah, we can say it's, it's average of the, the production uh, line. Okay. okay, good question. Okay, then you can go as slow as 1.5. I mean, as fast as 1.5, you can go as slow as 6.5. Okay, any more question, guys? Yeah, sometimes you have to challenge your lecturer, of course, in, in a good way, you know. Or you can ask any any you know question that comes in. No, no such a stupid question in learning. So you can ask I me mean, any questions. All right. If you guys are shy, you know, to ask questions in mind, you can you can type your question. Okay, let's go ahead. We have forty more minutes. Okay, guys. So this is old ways of implementing the digital circuits yeah i've shown you last uh, previously right so i mean this is the example of the chip so guys so imagine right so this is a small chip right yeah i mean if you guys have experience can get this kind of experiences it's really interesting you know so you're going to connect this to the the breadboard circuit so breadboard circuit is where you can plug in the the, the chip and then here you see it's connected to the input so let's say you want to give input one here, so you connect to five volt. If you want to give zero, then you connect it to ground. Then you're going to get here, the output is zero. All right, so previously, you know how they designed the digital circuit, so they're using this kind of chip. So you can see on this board, I mean, they construct a digital circuit. So this is a simple circuit, you know, so just imagine last time. That's why they, if you guys remember, you guys try, you guys try to search for supercomputer. When they first, you know, construct the supercomputer, the size is huge. I mean, sometimes the size can uh, reach to like, you know, uh, football size or the, you know, the tennis court size of computer. Because just imagine, you know, I mean, you have to use a complex or too many IC here, right? But sometimes you guys have a connection problem, and so that's why it is tedious, it is expensive, and it takes time slow because the time to travel is long, it's taken longer time, and then it's easy to make a wiring errors. Just imagine, guys, let's say you, you are connecting circuit of 100 type of these bonds. Let's say you got error at the final output. So imagine you guys have to go through one by one to find which connection that cost you faulty or could give you error, right? So it's headache, right? So it's not good. We're not using it anymore. We have better way, better way of doing it, right? So basically the early integrated circuit are based on gate array. So this is from the, 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 the simulation design. You see how, how, you know, complex is the circuit, too much wiring, you know, crossing each other. Okay. This is a modern digital design. So it's a full custom IC. So this is example of Intel Core i7. I mean, this is of course the top version of Intel processor nowadays. So you guys can see, I mean, there, there are many blocks here. I mean, if you guys zoom in, so they are using, you know, three, it's a, you know, almost one billion transistors. So, you know, I mean, it's huge number. It is like 1,000 million transistors are 
back to your i7 processor. So that's why you can see that the processing power becomes higher and higher nowadays. I mean, previously, you know, if you guys want to play advanced game, then you can, I mean, it cost you lagging whatsoever. But nowadays, I mean, they can make the graphic looks like real. They are able to process so much data at one time because of this complexity. All right, so that's why you can see, I mean, this is the example of the, you know, the, the current circuit. Of course, this design, I mean, it's not just one person work, right? So this is thousands of people working together and finally producing one powerful uh, processor where we use it in our our computer, right? So it's a very expensive to design, of course, because, you know, using thousands of engineers. I mean, let's say like one engineer, you have to pay, pay in average 5,000, I mean, you just times it per month, right? And then very expensive to manufacture. I mean, I mean it's taking, you know, very, very high end process. If you guys have chance, you guys can go visit the industry, you know, like uh, Siltera or Infineon, where they, they, you know, they do all this cheap fabrication. You can see how complex is the process. Even if you guys want to go into the, you know, the, the production line or the fab line, so you guys need to wear a special suit because not even one single dust are allowed in that area, you know, where they call it as clean room. Right, so not viable unless the market is very large. So I mean, to to have this kind of product, of course, you need to have a million of user. Then then it's gonna be worth it, right? Okay, then comes the field programmable gate array. All right, so what is field programmable gate array? So basically, in digital circuit. Oops. Okay. Basically, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, IC or chip, right? So we talk about chip. So there are two types of chip. The first one they call it ASIC. The second one they call it as FPGA. Okay, what is ASIC? So ASIC is application specific integrated circuit. So what is ASIC? It is something that when you design the circuit, right? Okay. Uh, let's say you design the circuit here. I mean, all these function, I mean, the, the, the section you can see here are already being specified to do specific things. I just try to give you example. So example here is the ALU. I'm, I'm just giving you example, right? So this is not the correct one. So here is the ALU and here might be the, you know, the, 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 what do you call it? Let's say the, the, cash right so here is a example for uh, DSP digital signal processing so all of this segment I mean is already being specified what to do so that is AC right so it is it's already specified you cannot change it but then they come out with FPGA so FPGA, I mean, they, they give you a fabric uh, and uh, what they call it, uh, a fabric of uh, logic blocks where you can program it. So let's say you want to make an adder here. So you write a code like the one I've shown you guys and then you load it inside the circuit. Then they're going to construct the connection. Then all these chips become Adder. Right? So you program it, then it becomes adder. Adder circuit. But then let's say you say, okay, I, I want to change it. I don't want it to be adder anymore. So you just can reprogram it. So you program it, you reprogram it. Instead of constructing adder, 
now trying you are making it as you program it again then you change it as subtracted right so I mean basically so this is the idea of field programmable gate array so it's not specific so it is program programmable Right, so but but learning digital electronics is before this, right? So here you can have option after you design your circuit, you can go with ASIC or you can go with FPGA. But why FPGA? The process is faster. Faster time from design to market. It is faster because you don't have to go and fabricate and do the testing of the chip. So you have the chip ready, empty chip, you just store your program, then it's ready to be used. It's ready. Right? But for ASIC, you have to design your circuit, then you mean produce two or, or mean 10 chips first, do the testing. If anything faulty, then you have to repeat the process, correct your design, then make it right, then you, it comes to the market. So ASIC takes time, FPGA is faster. But in terms of cost, if you are messing, mass production it, ASIC is the option. Because FPGA is gonna cost you high. Right? But the, the, the industry that need to have, you know, that have a uh, fast changing of technology, example like uh, smart TV or whatsoever, Normally they're gonna use FPGA because they want to compete with the time so that they're going to have their product arrive in the market earlier than other competitor. They use FPGA. So in our class, we're gonna learn about uh, using the FPGA uh, to construct our digital circuits, right? So basically uh, it's just an array of logic blocks. So if you zoom, zoom in here, it's just a lot of flip flops. So million of flip flops inside this block here where you can construct in any digital circuit that you guys want. So lots of programmable wiring. So the wiring is not fixed. You guys can choose to connect. Okay, let's say you want to connect here, connect here. I mean, this is an example. And flexible IO interfacing, you can choose whether you want to use this IO or you want to use this IO, it's up to you. And then two dominant FPGA makers. So one is Xilinx, second one is Altera. We are using Altera. Altera already being bought by Intel 2016. Right, so now it becomes Intel PSD. What is PSD? Programmable solution groups. So other speci specialist makers is Actel and also Latest Logic. This is also producing the FPGA. So if you guys have knowledge in this, this kind of area, I mean, it's, it's rare to find people that have expertise in this area. So if you guys have expertise in this area means you are going to be hot stuff. Okay, so this is configurable logic block. So uh, this is uh, what is inside the FPGA. So we zoom in inside here, then you guys are going to see this logic here. So this is LUT uh, lookup tables. So lookup tables is just, you know, you specify is the input and what the output you want it to be. Then there's a flip flop and then send the output. So basically, you know, this is just a, the thing that you guys are learning in digital circuit. So I mean, these are all the things that they use inside this chip, right? All right, programmable routing. So basically, you guys can choose which connection if you want to use example, right? You want to send your signal uh, to the output here. Give it the, the signal here. So let's say you want to send your signal somewhere else. Let's say you want to send your signal here. So maybe you can go through here. Then connect it here. Right, so I mean, this is an example. So this is a programmable routing. So that, that is what it means by FPGA, field gate programmable array. You can program it. So let's say if you don't want uh, this connection anymore, so you just delete it, right? So you can, you can, you can delete it, then you can reprogram it again. So there's advantage of using this FPGA. 
this one ah, the idea of configuring the IFPDA. Okay, what it meant here guys, programming an FPGA is not the same as programming a microprocessor. Okay, what does it mean here, all right? So let's say uh, if you guys, uh, okay, I'm giving you example uh, of uh, what I call it, uh, Arduino, right? So let's say this is Arduino. So Arduino, they have their own processor, right? So they have their own, I, I forgot what processor that they use. So they have their, their own processor on the Arduino board. Right, so programming the microprocessor on Arduino, you are putting in the software. And then this software is going to be executed by the processor. You already have the circuit here, inside here, the processor circuit. So it's going to process the, the software, the data, and then give you the output. But for FPGA, when they say programming FPGA, you are loading the hardware. So they don't have circuit here. So you are inserting a circuit. So you insert your circuit Oops. inside here. Right? So that is programming the FPGA. So that's why they say they, they download the B-Stream. B-Stream is just a, just a stream of data. Just a stream of data, right? So one, zero, one, zero, one, 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 one. So it's, it's just a stream of data where you send it inside here to construct the circuit. Programming in FPGA is known as configuration. Okay, LUTs are configured using B-Stream so that they can correct value. Shown here is typical. Okay, this is example of F four bit LT. Okay, we're gonna cover this one more in the uh, in our lecture, right? So let's keep on first to make you guys uh, confused. It's finished. Right, so uh, it's okay. Uh, I think we're gonna cover it more in uh, lab session. Okay, just want to give you uh, understanding, right? So this is regarding the design tools by using Altera Quartets, right? I mean, we are not using Prime here, so oops. We are using the web edition one. Okay, so architecture design. So we are designing the circuit. Uh, basically, we design architecture design. We can design using the K-Map. We can design using the FSM, FSM, finance state machine. We design it using ASM, right? So architecture design, then we code it. So here, HDL entry. So we code it, code, right? Or we can draw from, from block diagram here and test environment design. So if you guys are working on big design, right? So you need to write your, they call it as test bench, right? So test bench is a test bench circuit this is a circuit that you construct to test your real circuit so this is test environment design so normally if you guys are working in a big industry you have to know to do both so you have to know how to construct the circuit first they want they're going to specify what the outputs that they want then you construct the circuit then you code it right then you have to code how you're going to test it means specify the input so that you can see the output and then so here you're going to do the behavioral simulation, right? So normally I mean you're going to simulate the circuit first and see uh, whether the circuit function as you want. If not, then you go back and redesign again until you make sure that the output comes out as the one that you want it to be. Then you are sure that you got it right, right? Then you synthesize it. So you synthesize it. Uh, to check whether your circuit is being written in correct way and how you're going to put it on the FPGA later, then you implement it, then you do the timing analysis. So normally the timing analysis will be done uh, based on the the type of IC. You remember, remember you guys have to choose the family, right? Either it's a Cyclone 2 or Cyclone 4 or it can be, uh, I mean, there are many more FPGA family, 
So all those FPGA families have different specification. So based on the specifications, they're going to do the timing analysis to make sure that your circuit will run as it should be when you load it on the FPGA. Right then you have the bitstream. This bitstream is the one that you're going to put inside the on the FPGA. All right. I think that's all for today's class. So if you guys have any uh, question. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry for the interruption. My friend has asked a question by WhatsApp because he cannot ask the question by here. Okay, no problem. What's the question? Hello? Uh, hello? Uh, go ahead. What's the question? Uh, the question is, he cannot send message to ask the question here. Oh, oh that's the question. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, I mean, there are two options, right, to use the Microsoft team. The first one, you guys can use uh, from your web browser. I'm not sure whether uh, all does all web browser works with uh, Teams or because I've used uh, Chrome before, Chrome works well with uh, Teams. Sometimes if you cannot uh, see the chat session, right? I mean, you have to log out or you have to log in again. Or you can you can install the apps, the Microsoft Team apps. You can uh, join the lecture by using the apps. And then uh, it's better for you guys to use your student mail so that you can have uh, full access of the features of Teams. Any of you can see the chat uh, session? Section sorry, the meeting chat. So Any we, we see, but uh, the chat, uh, we cannot use it. Oh, really? I'm using a student email, huh? Yeah. Oh, you student? Okay. We can uh, oh, check in the Microsoft team. Okay, that's a good feedback. Okay, can, can you guys see my message? I type there? No, sir. We can't. No, see. no, no sir, no. No. That's interesting. Okay, wait, let me stop the recording first so that we don't record this session. This part.